Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, boy, I have a marathon of videos I'm putting together today. I'll be airing in every location on our different channels, uh, including our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You'll see videos that'll be popping up there, uh, mainly because they're loaded through iConnectFX.com. And uh, uh, this particular video, I'm trying to remember if this one's going to be there or if it's going to be actually on Israeli News Live. It really depends on what I get into. I think this one will actually, yeah, this one's going to be on Israeli News Live. I have another one that I have to put on iConnect FX Israeli News Live. 30 second clip will be here with you as well, mainly because I have discovered an amazing prophecy that tells you, I can't even say it here on YouTube directly. Uh, it is going to tell you who's going to control the world. And, uh, uh, I, I, and then when we get into Planet X, uh, we're going to be doing that. Uh, that initially will probably air over on Patreon. Uh, and, and again, I, some amazing discoveries that I've, that I've done on that. Some of these videos are kind of linking in together. In fact, the image you're looking at on your screen right now, uh, I, I, I'm not here to verify if this was really a Google Sky image or not of a winged planet or, or a asteroid, whatever. I don't know. I only have it up there as a, as a prop for you to be able to see, to, to visualize what I'm going to be speaking about because another discovery I made comes from Malachi chapter 4. What we have thought that it represents may not be exactly what our thinking has been. Uh, so that's what we're going to get into here in just a moment. Uh, so I, and it may even answer some of these questions that where people have asked, you know, well, if Jesus, the son of righteousness with healing in his wings. Wow. What do we have? Sun worship? Well, I may have been a little bit off on something there, and I think we may just have found the correction. So we're going to get into that here in just a moment here. So I can't wait to do this. Can't wait to share some of these amazing discoveries that, I, that I've made here with you. And uh, let's just see where God takes it. Uh, so let's get right into it. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to we're going to come here to Malachi chapter four in the Hebrew. It's Malachi chapter three, going down in several verses, uh, getting on down to verse twenty, and. I know you're going to say, Steve, you already taught on this. Wait, don't stop. Stay with me here. I, I spoke on this the other day. Uh, what was it, a week ago? Yeah, six days ago. Astounding new evidence of the two witnesses. Very, very incredible uh, message there. And, but I have to tell you something. Uh, as I was doing this video right here, and I was talking about this, and I and as I came back over here to Malachi chapter four, and I began to tell you about the son of uh, the son of righteousness shall, shall arise with healing in his wings. For the first time ever, something in my heart I came up checked. It was literally happening while I'm making the video, and uh, and I'm looking at the way the the you know as i'm reading it i realize it is true elijah is going to come elijah is going to come in the future john the baptist is that elijah i even spoke about you know if you you know in the comment section there you know if you if you want make a comment i'm really curious your thought if anybody can catch how deep that really is of what jesus says in matthew and only one person was close didn't have the full picture, but was close. Now, and then I'm preparing on all these messages that, I, that I'm about to be releasing today. Some on Patreon, some here, um, and uh, of course some over on IsraeliNewsLive.org. And like I said, a marathon of videos that I have here. i got a whole set of notes here. I was talking to a, a friend of mine, Elizabeth, there on the phone there. And suddenly I realized what Malachi 4 was saying about the son of righteousness. And then I realized where I had went wrong on that and why I felt checked in my heart. So before I do that, I'm going to take, I want to read with you this scripture here. And remember, we read the other day where Jesus said in Matthew, the Hebrew Matthew, 
He said, if you can receive it, he said, he is the Elijah that in the future is to come. So we knew that he was talking about the only the only scripture we have for the future is to come is Malachi chapter four. Uh, when we get down here to verse five, behold, I will send you, Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And it's not going to be two men anointed with the spirit either. I used to think that it's going to be actually Moses and Elijah. But that's going to be in a way you don't think about either. That's where I'm going about getting deep. So, as we come back to this, um, and I have a lot, well, my, my head is just starting to spin with the different things that are happening in it right now. So, bear with me, all right? He says, for behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven. Well, I tell you what, before I go into that, let me, let's back up here. But what Jesus does do, remember, he does apply Behold, I send my messenger, and he shall clear the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in, behold, he comes, says the Lord of hosts. That was John the Baptist fulfilling the ministry of Elijah at that moment. But when he says further, Jesus says, if you can receive it, he is the Elijah coming or in the, the future to come. That's not been fulfilled yet. That's Elijah coming again. In fact, when Mount Transfiguration takes place, we have Moses and Elijah there on Mount Transfiguration. Where's John? Think about it. Where's John? Because when Jesus was talking about John, John was already beheaded. But he's telling you he was the Elijah. But the reason why he says, if you can receive it, because it went against a doctrinal view they had. That's what makes it difficult. Now, I know the answer to that. But it's just not right time. It's not time yet to, to bring that out. All right. But when we get down here, this is the Elijah that's coming in the future. Verse 5, or in the case, verse 23 in chapter 3 of a Hebrew Bible. Malachi 4, 1 to 5, or to, technically to 6, is all about judgment. He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, is what John did in the Elijah ministry during the day he was on the earth. And the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse, has never been fulfilled. In fact, when Jesus attributes the fulfillment of the fathers to the children, he mentions that about John, but he never goes into the children to their fathers, the heart of the children to their fathers. Why? Because that is the second advent of Elijah's coming right before destruction. Okay? So let's, let's back up. For behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Now the root is those that brought them into this world. If you ever do studying of ancient documents, it always talks about what root are you from? What lineage are you from? It really is a demonic war of hybridization that's on this planet right now. And there are many children that are never born of God. They, they never can come to know. You remember where I quote where Jesus says in the Hebrew, Matthew, he's talking about the tares and he said he comes in there. The enemy came in and they sowed tares upon, literally that word is upon in Hebrew, upon the wheat. That's the mingling of the seed. Satan wanting to get his own lineage in here. The scripture also says, ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So no matter how much they learn, they still won't come to it. Watch what it goes on to say though. Next verse. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And you shall what? 
Tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, says the Lord of hosts. That's why I came up with a question in my mind. And I'm, re I'm sitting there in this video. I'm reading it. I'm talking about Jesus. And I said, that is a scripture applied to Jesus because what? He did have healing in his wings. They said, if I could only touch uh, the seat of his garment, literally in the Hebrew, that was the wing of his garment, they'd be made whole. Now, actually, the, the, the woman that had the blood issue wanted to touch the, the rim of his garment. In the, in the Hebrew Matthew, uh, it is those that were in Syria that said if they could touch the wing of his garment, they only just wanted to touch the wing. So I, I actually was thinking that that's what that is. But you remember at the beginning of the video, right? Planet X, and I don't think this is Planet X personally. I, I just don't believe that. But you have the wing look. And I don't even necessarily think it necessarily is Planet X per se in this case here. But what I do believe, <clears throat> because if you look at the scripture and what, and what Malachi is saying, and just follow along there with me with this, but unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing, and Hebrew can be its or his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. But then it goes, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, says the Lord of hosts. You remember the Exodus story? Which is interesting because right after that, he says, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him and to Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. It's funny. It's funny how that's the very next verse. And for some reason in my mind, I immediately started thinking about the Exodus. The Exodus account was a judgment very similar to that about what is about, which is what is about to happen on the earth. That son of righteousness, they also refer to Planet X as a failed dwarf star, a, a second sun, but they talk about it being winged. It could even refer to our own sun as it's being affected by this system coming in, because as you know, when you have these huge CMEs, it just blows up, it looks like big wings and things coming off the sun. But why do I say that? The son of righteousness with healing in his wings. Why would it be called healing when it turns around and talks about that the wicked are going to be ashes under the soles of your feet? The healing is, is because it's healing to the entire, for the entire body of believers because we finally get rid of all the evil and wickedness on the earth. Judgment is brought in, and the son of righteousness, which is to, the tzedak, what is righteous, brings in that righteousness of a cleansing of the earth, much like the Exodus account. Even in the Colbrin, when it talks about the Exodus account, it said that the, uh, it's literally speaking of Moses and Aaron, that they were, they were able to prophesy of the events that were going to happen and their seers, the Egyptian seers, did not know about it. Moses would come down and he'd say, there's going to be frogs, there were frogs. He would come down and say, there's going to be earthquakes, there's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be fire falling from the sky uh, the next day. There's going to be fire falling from the sky the next day. Every plague that hit Egypt, he knew about in advance. Could we literally say then that in those days there, the son of righteousness had arised or had arisen? Yes, it was wiping off everything that stood in the way of the children of Israel that were in bondage and in slavery. So I want to clarify with you, I don't want this to be a doctrine. This is just, as I'm looking at this, I feel like that this may be where this prophecy is actually going. Because the son of righteousness with healing in his wings, or its wings, it could be either way, 
And I've always referred more to his because I always thought it applied to Jesus. But as we begin to look at everything, it's all judgment. So I am wondering then if the sun, S-U-N, it's not sun worship, like somebody had mentioned to me, would that be like sun god worship? And I said, no, it wouldn't be that. But I didn't, I didn't know how to answer the question. So then I began to look at this, though, and then we, we think about the planet X being called a second sun or the winged planet. And in this case here, how does it bring healing? Like I said, it is because it, moves out all the evil they literally malachi is saying they become ashes under the soles of your feet the healing is wiping away sin and, and there's another document uh in one of the egyptian writings where it literally says that the archons are fearful because they know that the judgment that is coming and the stars are all moved out of their place everything that you deal with with planet x and the heavens collapse upon one another it is judgment that comes and all these fallen angels are being judged and they are going to perish with it. So I think this is what it's speaking about here. That son of righteousness may very well be that binary system that's coming in. And I'm going to be speaking on that totally separately here in just a little bit. So I want to share this here with you first. Now, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him and to Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and the judgments. And like I said, we're going back to Horeb. This is when they fled Egypt. That's when the judgments came and everything. And he's only asking you to remember about that. But then he says, behold, I will send you, Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Your two witnesses of Revelation 11 bring judgment. All plagues as often as they will. Plagues are associated with planet X. Now, just to share, share with you something else here, right? This is from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Mysteries of sin. All their wisdom, and they do not know the mystery of existence, nor understand ancient matters. And they do not know what is going to happen to them, and they will not save their souls from the mystery of existence. There's a blank spot. And this will be for you the sign that is going to happen. When those born of sin are locked up, evil will disappear before justice as darkness disappears before light. As smoke vanishes and no longer exists, so will evil vanish forever. And justice will be revealed like the sun which regulates the world. And all those who curb the wonderful mysteries will no longer exist. And knowledge will pervade in the world and there will never be folly there. Notice the sun which regulates the world. One of the big things that caused so much calamity on the earth is when that planet starts to come through, it affects our sun. Our sun has all of these huge CMEs, radiation, everything else. What does it do? Cracks up the earth, causes volcanoes, causes earthquakes, lava spews out. And I mean, all kinds of things begin to happen, right? I'll give you another example of that right here. This is from the Colbrin, and again, I don't like using this as a, um, uh, as a, it's not a biblical reference, but only look at it as a historical reference. Uh, and what did I want to bring out on this? There's a reason. Mountains will open up and belch forth fire ashes and ashes. Trees will be destroyed. All living things engulfed. Waters will be swallowed up by the land and seas will boil. These are things we read about in the book of Revelation. People will scatter in madness. They will hear the trumpet and battle cry of the destroyer and will seek refuge within dens of, in the earth. Hmm. And then it tells you when it would happen. Men will fly in the air like birds and swim in the seas like fishes. Men will talk peace one with another. Hypocrisy and deceit will have their day. Women will be as men and men as women. Passion will be a plaything of men. And I'm going to save this next part here for when I do 
a separate video. I can't go into this issue as of right now. Okay, so that's what we're looking at there. Now, you go back to Exodus, where he's talking about remembering Horeb, and in chapter 17, one of the things that happened during that time, they were encamped in Rephidim. Rephidim, by the way, is the the fallen of the dead. Or that's the fallen angels, but they're called Rephidim, which means the, the, the dead ones. And there was no water for the people to drink. And wherefore the people strove with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, why strive you with me? Wherefore do you try the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore have you brought us out of Egypt to kill us and our children, our cattle with thirst? Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pass on before the people and take with you of the elders of Israel and your rod wherewith you smote the river and take in your hand and go. And behold, I will stand before you there upon the rock in Horeb and you shall smite the rock and there shall come forth water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And the name of the place is called Masa and Mirabah because of the striving of the children of Israel because they tried the Lord saying, "The Lord is the Lord among us or not? Now, I bring this out because Malachi says, "Remember ye the law. Of, uh, remember Moses, my servant, at Mount Horeb." And he is where he says, uh, "Which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and the judgments." He's not necessarily talking about the statutes and judgments in this case here. He's just asking you to remember that time period. And the one significant thing that we find, though, is the smiting of the rock. And that rock that brings forth its waters is a representation of Jesus Christ because Christ would be smitten that he bring forth waters, the waters of life, which we also find in John 4 when the woman of Samaria said unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask me to drink, of which am a, a, a woman of Samaria, and for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that says unto you, Give me to drink, you would not have asked of him. He would have given you living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, you, you, we, we know the story. The well is deep and everything. He has nothing to draw with. And he says, Whoever shall drink shall, uh, of that water, he said, is, they're going to thirst again. And so... But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up to everlasting life. Uh, all of this, though, like I said, this is only going back to the fact that it's Christ. Um, it's his life living within us. It's not a physical water in this case here, but the reason why I bring this up is because when you're coming down to the judgment of Malachi 4, you need to have that living water of Jesus Christ flowing within you, which is his own spirit, his own life in you. All right, this is why I'm bringing this out because he says, remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him and horror for all Israel with the statutes of judgments. Behold, I will send you, Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So one of the aspects of Moses and Elijah is going to be to get you back to the waters of life through Jesus Christ before he brings that judgment. Because what does he say right after that? And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And those fathers there are not the patriarch fathers. That is getting you back to the fathers, the apostles, the true fathers, to know the true gospel of Jesus Christ before that judgment comes because it's going to burn as an oven. And yes, all the proud and all the do wickedly shall be stubble and the day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. That's going to come. It's going to happen. So when we go back to the woman at the well, Jesus says, go get your husband and bring him hither. And she, uh, she says, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, you have said, well, I have no husband. 
for you have had five husbands and he whom you now the one that you have now is not your husband in that you said truly and she says to him i perceive that you are a prophet our fathers worship in this mountain you say that in jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship jesus saith unto her woman believe me the hour comes and you shall neither worship in this mountain nor yet at jerusalem worship the father you worship you know not what we know what we worship for salvation is of the jews but the hour comes and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the father in spirit and in truth and the father seeks such to worship him god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth the woman said unto him i know that the messiah comes which is called christ then when he has come he will tell us all things jesus said unto her i that speak unto you am he or I am and upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman yet no man said what seekest thou or what talkest thou with or why do you talk to this woman here right so she runs in the city drops her water pot and everything but what did he do he gave her a sign that out of the belly would flow living waters if she drunk from him you know when he was crucified on the cross and that Roman soldier took that spear and stuck it into his side. Remember, blood and water came out of his side. It were sep the two were separated because the water of life was in him. When he said to his apostles later, he breathed upon them and he said, Receive you the Holy Spirit. He was showing that he was the very God that breathed in the nostrils of Adam and he became a living soul. That water of life is what we need in us today in order to withstand the judgment that is coming tomorrow. And I don't mean that literally, but more figuratively. We are on the precipice of judgment striking this earth. And there's going to be one last opportunity to make things right. And that will be when the fulfillment of Malachi 4 begins to take place. That son of righteousness, as I once thought was Jesus, I believe is judgment. It follows the pattern of that entire chapter. You remember what Jesus said as well here, and this is in John chapter 5. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive how can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that comes from God only then Jesus says a very famous statement here do not think that I will accuse you to the father there is one that accuseth you even Moses in whom you trust for had you believed Moses you would have believed me for he wrote of me but if you believe not his writings how should, be, how should you believe my words? I find that interesting. He said that there is one that accuses you, even Moses in whom you trust. I believe that's one of the reasons why we see Moses in, or, or what appears to be in Revelation 11, the ministry of Moses and Elijah because Moses is the one that turned the water to blood. Uh, both Elijah or Elijah stopped the, the heavens that it didn't rain in the days of their ministry. Moses cast out every kind of plague that there ever was. Moses is going to bring about a judgment upon this world. And he is going to do the accusing then. They have so trusted in Moses, not to mention he comes to set the law straight that Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of the law. That's why he says, for if you'd believe Moses, you should have believed me, for he wrote of me. 
He said, The Lord your God will raise up a prophet likened unto me from among your brethren. And all that he says, you're to hear it. You can't serve two masters. You'll either love one and hate the other, or vice versa. I say these things because judgment's coming. And it's coming soon. This is just a kind of highlight of some other videos that I'm doing today. I'm going to close this one now, share this with you. But definitely be sure you'll see a 30 second clip coming later about iConnect. And then you're going to be seeing over on Patreon. Uh, it's probably where I'm going to load the one on Planet X uh, for now. Going deeper into some of the discoveries we've made on that. Uh, eventually, I may end up sharing that here on Israeli News Live, but I'm just not sure as a win yet. Uh, and then also be catching up on some of the news events that are taking place. And those events are clearly showing the prophetic sign of where we are. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Good afternoon. And by the way, too, thank you for your support of this ministry. We really greatly appreciate your support. Uh, and if you want to continue to do that, just remember Israeli News Live. It's, it's right there above my head on the screen there. But if you go to our website there, uh, you can see that as well. You can donate online uh, or by mail either way. So we thank you uh, for your love and support of this ministry. Good day.